Okay, let's take a walk down memory lane and uh, handle this basic division problem. Now, uh, for some of you, you might have been away from math for many, many years, and that's perfectly okay. You're saying, yes, I can do this problem, but let me get my handy-dandy calculator. And that's, um, you know, there's no problem with that. You should be using your calculator to do this. You don't have to do this by hand. Now, if you're a math student currently, and you're, maybe you're taking algebra or beyond, then you need to brush up on your arithmetic. So if you forgot this, it's okay. You know, I would say like 90% of the people forgot this, maybe even more, especially if you've been away from school for uh, decades. So for me, you know, I uh, was learning arithmetic way back in the good old 1970s. And I don't really remember all my teachers, but I do remember my first grade teacher because she smoked <laughs> right outside the classroom. She was probably saying, these kids are driving me crazy. But she did her job because I did, uh, you know, walk away from elementary school being pretty good at arithmetic. And all of us were, at, uh, you know, one time. You could have done this problem. You were doing this pro problems like this and more challenging problems. You just forgot this stuff, and that's okay. So I think arithmetic for most people, it's kind of like riding a bike. If you have a if you haven't rode a bike in 30, 40 years, you could learn how to ride a bike again pretty quickly. And arithmetic, I think, is kind of the same. So what we're going to do, have a little fun with this particular problem. Now, of course, um, if you think you could do this without the aid of a calculator, kind of think about it for a moment, see what you can remember. That's kind of the idea of this video. And uh, hopefully you'll walk away from this as I'm going to show you how to do this problem in two ways that you'll be like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. OK, now, again, there is a caveat if you are a current math student, maybe taking algebra or maybe a more advanced mathematics, you need to be. Um, you know, uh, up to speed on your arithmetic, okay? Because advanced math or algebra, things like that, uses arithmetic. So, you know, for those of you, plus two, you're probably not that far away from elementary school. Maybe, you know, a couple, two, three, four years, maybe a little bit longer. But some of us, you know, we've been away from elementary school for decades. So we're going to have fun with this prom, and we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, pre-calculus. But I also have... Um, many, many uh, math courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, HiSET, TASC, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, ALEX exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, maybe many other type of exams, guess what they all have in common? Math. Okay. And if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on these exams. So uh, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. If I do not have your test, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool uh, learning system. And then obviously help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to do well in math, then you have to be serious about your notes. Okay, so I've been teaching math for decades and it's crystal clear to me. The one thing I could point to with consistency over all those decades is uh, those students who take great math notes almost always do very well, and the reverse is true. Those students who take notes, but they kind of take notes like, you know, uh, like this, right? Sometimes they're taking notes. Sometimes they're looking at their cell phone. Sometimes they're taking notes. Sometimes they're talking to their friends. Sometimes they're taking notes. Other times they're doing homework uh, in math class for another class. Listen, I get it. I made all those mistakes and more, but you're going to end up with grades like this. Okay, if you want to do well in mathematics, and this becomes more important the more advanced math you take, you got to have really excellent study habits. Okay, and note taking is where it starts. Okay, so this is all about keeping you focused. But as you improve in your notes, um, you can use my notes to study from. So those would include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of uh, this video as well. All right, so uh, yeah, again, if you think you could do this problem, you know, pause it. You want to kind of play along and see what you can kind of remember. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it now, though. All right, so there's two ways we can think of these uh, this particular problem. Now, I'm going to actually show you this. So we have 
four and a half divided by 0.3. So we got a fraction, a mixed number fraction and a decimal. So you're like, okay, well, if it was a decimal and decimal, that'd be one thing or a fraction and a fraction, but I got a decimal and a fraction. And I'm kind of using this notation here. So we need to kind of uh, decide, are we going to work all in decimals or all in fractions? Well, it's really up to you. Okay, so here I have four and a half divided by 0.3. Well, four and a half is the same thing as a decimal of 4.5. So I could just, uh, you know, most people wouldn't be able to just interpret that. Oh, yeah, four and one half. One half is 0.5. So if you don't remember that, I want to watch some of my other videos in my pre algebra playlist on how to convert a fraction to a decimal. But let's just, I'm going to make the assumption that most of you uh, would be okay with four and a half being equal to 4.5. So the equivalent problem here would be 4.5 divided by 0.3. Okay, so we're going to do this problem this way. Okay, now if you can do this problem right now, you're like, oh, okay, now I can do this. Then pause the video, have fun with it. Uh, but we can also think of this problem in, uh, in terms of fractions. So we have 4.5 divided by 0.3. Now 0.3, the way we say 0.3, of course I'm saying that decimal right now, 0.3, but... This is also the same thing as three tenths, three tenths. So this is four and one half, okay, divided by three tenths. We're going to be very careful here on how we uh, read this problem. But if you can see that here, when we're talking about fractions, four and one half divided by three tenths, well, this is another way we can find the answer. So here's two setups for you that hopefully. You know, uh, most of you, one of you, uh, most of you would be like, oh, okay, I remember either how to do this or this, okay? But I'm going to go, I'm going to cover both of these. Of course, we're going to get the same answer. And if you don't want to see the answer right now, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to get into it right now. All right, so let's take a look at the decimal version of doing this. And again, all of you have learned this, okay? Now, most of you forgot that and <laughs> forgot how to do this, but that's okay. So when we're dealing with decimals, division of decimals, what you have to do is we have to move that decimal point here, okay, for this number, and we've got to scoot it over until it's on the other side of this number, okay? So we're going to move this over one, and I'm kind of using real simple language. I don't want to get into divisor and quotient. We don't need to make it that technical, but remember, you move this decimal point over, and so this guy has to move over as well. So if I have to move this decimal point two times, this decimal point, they're kind of linked together. They would both move the same number of spaces, right? So I got to move this decimal point over. That becomes a three. And instead of 4.5, this becomes 45.0. So my new problem now is 45 divided by three. And most of you hopefully would say, oh, the answer is 15. But if you don't remember that, we'd be like, okay, three goes into four one time, then one times three, that's three. Then I'm going to subtract three from four, that comes uh, becomes one, three can't go into one. I'll drop the five down, that becomes 15, three goes into 15, five, but 45 divided by three is 15. So that is our answer. Now, if you got that answer, I must give you a wonderful little happy face with an A plus. And because we're talking about elementary school, uh, I'm going to give you a bunch of stars because I remember way back uh, in the good old days getting all these stars and I was very happy about that. I don't know what it was, but these little stars made us uh, made me happy and I think my friends as well. It was so cool being in uh, elementary school in the 1970s because recess was um, was pretty exciting. We I don't know I mean I don't know what they do today for recess, but we were out there, you know. Um, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I always <laughs> got beat up and scraped up. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyways, I miss those days. But let's move on. And if you got this right again, very, very good. Because, um, you know, that's this is probably the harder version. Well, it all depends, right? If you know how to work with decimals, um, that's pretty good. But most people totally for, um, have forgotten how to deal with decimals. But now let's move on and look at the same problem in terms of fractions. So recall... We have four and one half divided by three tenths. That was the setup. Let me just go back up here and remind you how we set this up, right? So this is four and one half divided by 0.3 or three tenths. So this is the problem that we're doing right now, okay? All right, so 
First things first, first thing I have four and one half, that's a mixed number fraction. This is a proper fraction. So I'm gonna to have to convert four and one half into an improper fraction. So the way I do that is I go two times four, that's uh, eight plus one, that's nine halves. Okay, so uh, for again, everybody out there has learned this. Most people have forgotten that, but that's okay, all right? All right, so we have nine halves divided by three tenths. So what do we do now? Well, it's division, okay? When we're talking about division of fractions, what you do is we're gonna take that division operator, we're gonna turn it into multiplication. But when I do that, the fraction to the right of this division operator, this guy right here, we have to flip it upside down, okay? So uh, that's called the reciprocal, and I'm using kind of loose language here. Again, we're not gonna make this overly technical. There's no need to, we're just having fun. Uh, doing some basic math. So this, instead of 3 tenths, this is going to be 10 over 3. We're going to flip it upside down. Now we're ready to go ahead and deal with this uh, uh, product. Okay, so we're multiplying fractions. We multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we have 9 times 10 is 90, and 2 times uh, 3 is 6. 90 divided by 6 is 15. Okay, now, uh, again, of course, it's the same answer, but uh, hopefully most of you out there were saying, okay, nine, uh, nine halves, nine over two times 10 over three. Uh, most of you, or some of you hopefully remember how to cross cancels here. So, oh, three, this three goes into nine, three goes into nine three times, and this two goes in that 10 five times. So I can go three times five is 15. So if you saw that, okay, then I must give you another happy face uh, with an A plus and you, you get your star. So whether you work with fractions or decimals, if you got this problem right, very good. Now, if you were like, no, I couldn't do this. I don't remember any of this. Well, you learned it. Uh, it's somewhere back there in the recesses of your memory. But um, again, you know, don't feel bad that you don't remember this right off the bat. Okay. I mean, I'm a math teacher. I'm working with math all the time. But if I, you know, get away from math for uh, a year or two years, I'm going to be rusty on this stuff and I'm going to have to brush up on my math skills. And so, you know, um, it's the same thing for you. If you have any intentions of going back to school or relearning arithmetic, don't feel bad about your, you know, your current situation. Nobody should feel bad about um, a skill that they have forgotten just because you haven't used it. And calculators are great tools. However, again, if you are going to be uh, learning math, you know, algebra or beyond, you're going to need your arithmetic, uh, arithmetic skills, okay? Arithmetic is very important, especially dealing with the fractions. Decimals may be a little bit less important, but it's all important, okay? So just keep up on your math skills. Just take it one step at a time, but uh, again, don't feel bad if you don't remember this stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff I learned way back in school that, you know, I certainly have forgotten, and that is completely normal. But uh, hopefully, you know, some of you out there got this right, and if that is the case, excellent. Good for you. You do remember, you must have had great math teachers way back to whenever you learned mathematics. And then uh, if you had fun with this little video, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos uh, from basic to advanced mathematics, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. My goal is to try to make math fun, try to make math clear and understandable. Listen, a lot of people don't like math, I get it, but if you have to learn math, then you know your attitude really counts, right? If you're like, I hate math, I just don't want, well, you know, that's gonna be a, a barrier to your uh, success in mathematics. So listen, if you gotta learn this stuff, let's just try to at least make it clear and understandable so you can be successful in mathematics. Now again, if you uh, are learning math and you need additional help, I have tons of videos on my channel, okay, organized from basic to advanced. You can go through and scour through uh, all those videos, a ton of content, okay? So if you like my teaching style, there are those videos there to help you, but my best math help will be within my math help program. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.